Okay, so the kettlebell swing. Some people think it's the best thing since sliced bread and some people think it's the stupidest thing they've ever seen. Regardless of wherever you stand on it, today we're going to break down and teach the kettlebell swing so you can start using it and make an informed decision about how amazing it is or isn't. This week's topic comes by way of a good friend and client who suggested that I teach the right way to do a kettlebell swing. I say right because there is more than one way to do a swing and if you've seen them in the gym, you're probably thinking about either the American swing or the Russian or hard style way of swinging. Today we're gonna to go over the hard style way of swinging, which is how I was taught how to do it and arguably the more efficient of the two. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So there is just one hard requirement before doing a kettlebell swing, and that is to have a proper deadlift or hinge mechanic. If you're not comfortable with it, don't have it, I'd highly recommend going back and revisiting it until you get comfortable with it. Uh, doing so will greatly reduce your chance of injury. If you need a reference point on it, we have an excellent deadlift tutorial up, so check it out in the description below. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's move on to our setup. To quote a popular saying, your setup is your first rep. The better your setup, the better every single rep that follows will be. So to do this, we want to start with our stance. Where do we stand? You're going to set up with one foot's distance from the belt. The reason for this is that it will allow you to get into a proper hinge mechanic and it will leave you enough room for takeoff and for landing of the belt. So now that we're the right distance from the bell, we want to get into our hinge to get ready to swing. The best way to do this is by taking your hands and chopping your hips. You're going to apply pressure into the hips and your chest is going to drop while you're keeping your back straight. Doing so, your hammies are going to get tight and eventually they'll tell you when you can't get any lower. Now, if you can't get low enough to grab the bell, you can bend your knees a little bit to get lower into your hinge. Now, this is the last part of your setup before we get into all the fun. So you wanna make sure that you're set up for success. Deep into your hinge and with the bell within arm's reach, you want to make sure that all your proportions are correct. So that means chest above butt, butt above knees. Lock your hands onto the bell, pinch your armpits and pull your shoulders back. This will engage your lats. With that done, we're ready to move on to the next thing. Before you fly, you better make sure you can take off and land. So in order to do this, we are going to practice our kettlebell takeoff and our landing. Now, with all the steps up until now, you are hands on the bell and deep into your hinge. What you're going to do now is tilt the bell towards you and you are going to practice what's called a pendulum. A pendulum is you hiking the bell up and landing it back on the ground and it has a pendulum-like motion. So you throw the bell back between your legs and straighten your legs as you go up and then you bend them back down to land the bell. At no point are you picking the bell up or putting it down with your arms. Everything is happening with the hips. You are simply throwing the bell back between your legs and using your legs to ascend into your hinge and descend back to the floor. And as a quick anecdote, if you're hiking it and landing it incorrectly, you're probably gonna feel it in your lower back. So look for that feedback. And once you feel like you're hiking it up and putting it down smoothly with no back pain, you're good to go. This next part is gonna teach you what the top of your swing feels like without actually doing a swing with total body tension. So I want you to walk away from the bell for a minute and we're going to, from the ground up, show you what the top of your swing should feel like. I want you to drive your heels deep into the ground. Think about pushing through your heels and now lock your knees out. I want you to squeeze your butt as tight as possible and I want you to squeeze your core as tight as possible. I want you to put both your arms out in front of you and I want you to pinch your armpits. And now I want you to stand with your head tall, think about it going through the ceiling. If you have somebody for this next part to show you what the tension feels like, great. If not, don't worry about it. But with your arms out in front of you, I want you to, with your armpits pinched, have them try to push your hands up and resist that push. That should give you the feeling of tension at the top of your swing. And that is what every single rep of your swing should feel like. And just a small coaching tip from experience, with all these cues that we just learned, I don't suggest that you try to do everything at once when you're learning your kettlebell swing. Focus on one thing at a time. So, are your knees locked? Focus on that for one set. Are your knees locked and are your glutes engaged? Focus on that for one set and build on upward. If you try to lock every cue in place between every single swing, it's going to fry your brain and discourage you. So one step at a time when you're putting these cues into place. 
Now, onto the actual swing. Thank God, right? Okay, so to do your swing, we're gonna combine your pendulum with the total body tension we were just practicing. And the connecting piece of this is going to be you popping at the hips. There is a distinct pop and thrust that happens at the hips that will drive the bell up and allow you to engage in total body tension. And just like your pendulum, at no point are your arms doing any of the work to lift the bell. You should never feel like you are raising the bell. The momentum from the pop and squeezing of the glutes is what's going to drive the bell up and allow it to float. On the way back down, I want you to allow the bell to do the work to pull you back into the hinge. At no point do you have to manually plan a hinge. The bell will pull you back into a tight hinge and then you thrust and pop at the hips to send the bell back up. One way you'll know that if you're hinging wrong on the way back down is if the bell is deep down between your legs. If it's not tight and close to the crotch area, somewhere something is going wrong with the hinge. So you wanna make sure that each and every rep has the bell very close to the crotch area before you thrust at the hips and send the bell back up floating. And as a quick side note, in all the years I've been teaching this, I have never, ever, ever, ever seen anyone hit themselves down there. So don't be afraid of it. Let the bell pull you back down into a tight hinge before you thrust up to the top of your swing. And now to land the bell, we're gonna rely on what we learned in the pendulum. And at the bottom of your swing, you're going to bend your knees to land the bell back down on the ground smoothly. And now there's just one last little piece of your kettlebell swing, and that is your breathing. You want to match the top of your swing with breathing out and the bottom of your swing with breathing in. And I've heard this next part likened to how boxers throw punches. When boxers throw punches, they give a little tss as they breathe out. You're gonna do the same with your kettlebell swing. As you reach the top of your swing, you're going to tss and then breathe in through your nose on the bottom of your swing. You're going to do this on every single rep. And one of the reasons you wanna do this is that if you hold your breath for the entire duration of your kettlebell swing, you're going to knock yourself out. Anybody who's ever boxed can tell you if you hold your breath as you are in the ring, you know, sparring or doing whatever, and you are not breathing as you punch and drawing back in, you wind up winded and knocked out within the first round. The same is going to be true of your kettlebell swings. It is a punch each and every time that you need to breathe for it. And start to finish, that's it. That's the kettlebell swing. So now, why bother doing it? Referencing my own opinion on the kettlebell swing, I think it's amazing. There is a thing within the hard style community called the what the hell effect, which states that within a duration of time working with kettlebells, a lot of people see increases in mobility, flexibility, strength, condition. All these things happen simultaneously while you are working on your kettlebell swing. And as you move up, the gains continue. So personally speaking, I'm a huge fan of hard style kettlebell swinging. I've seen the benefits myself and I encourage as many of my students as I can to pick up kettlebell swings. Now, I'll give you this, it's not for everyone. I have some people that hate them and refuse to do them. That might be you, but I think as far as a Swiss army knife goes of hitting so many different aspects of fitness, the kettlebell swing is the foundation of everything and a great way to go. And there are so many ways to program it as well. There are so many different swinging schemes. There are so many different complexes that you can do once you have a handle on your basic two-arm swing and some more advanced kettlebell techniques. So I personally think it is worth the time investment in learning and getting good at to move on to higher levels of fitness. That said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and use it to master your hard style kettlebell swing. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe and leave us a comment in the section below and let us know how you're doing with your kettlebell swing. All right, that's it guys. See you in the next one. If you need a reference point on it, we have an excellent video, tutorial video up. Uh, you can find the link in the description. Rescription? Rescription is an interesting word. I just came up with a new English word. That's awesome. Rescription.